Would you care to explain your decision on the asking the Corporate Governance Council to make their seats available? I would also ask you to expound a little bit on the letter you received from them regarding the appointment of the CEO of Thalem. Uh, good morning, uh, viewers and listeners. Uh, Bibi, thanks for the question. At this point in time, there is not, uh, how, well, there is not um, a meeting with the Corporate Governance Council this week. And after that meeting, I will further discuss, have a public discussion rather, if it's necessary then on the way forward and what has led to where we are at. Um, there are those who, uh, you know, are quick to run to the media. We are in election year, and um, everybody wants to get bragging points over the other one. Everybody wants to try and throw uh, one under the bus. Everybody wants to, um, every time there is a cigarette on the pond fill that somebody dropped, uh, somebody screams that the dump is on fire. Um, the Corporate Governance Council had requested additional information um, when I sent, on behalf of the government, I sent, uh, I, I, well, I sent, um, let, let, let me back up a bit. For seven years, the position at uh, Telem was vacant. Just like for eight years, the government building was unoccupied. Um, was called by me the largest pigeon cub in the world. Um, for seven years, there was a vacancy for the CEO at Telem. Um, why previous governments did not fill the position, I do not know. I did not, I was not the shareholder representative of uh, Telem, neither was I in the government for more than the one year um, in 2012. I've been told when I got in by the management, by the supervisory board that, hey, there's a vacancy, we need to fill it. Telem is going through um, important discussions, important changes. There have been talks about um, merging or selling shares of Telem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We need to have a full management team. So the board went out and started a process to appoint someone. Two members were submitted to the government um, and for the government to make a choice of one of them, which we did, and a name was sent on for the screening. I got a letter back from them saying we can't move on with the screening. We need the second, uh, the second name as well. I was on my way out. I had to travel, I think it was. I said, well, I won't have any argument with them. Send them the information in order not to have any delay. When I got the letter back from them, um, I gave it my interpretation and I gave it my reaction. Uh, they have sent back a reply stating that there must be a misunderstanding and therefore they are requesting an urgent meeting for us to clear up the matter. It is just a few days before that I have had um, meetings, well, a few weeks ago, I've had meetings with the Corporate Governance Council because one of the problems that they have had also for ever since they were established, they have not been getting uh, their monies to run the Corporate Governance Council as prescribed by law. Mm -hmm. The funding for the Corporate Governance Council has to come from government-owned companies. We had Eswa Bay uh, do a study among the government companies to see um, which of the companies uh, should come up with the funding and what the amount for each company would be. So there was a division key that was advised by the SOAB um, and a certain amount of contribution among the four bigger companies, which was Telem, Airport, Harbor, and GBE. I've met with three of them. I've invited all of them. Telem did not show up, and we don't know why. 
but I've met with three of the companies to explain to them why and what not. In the meantime, the Corporate Governance Council had asked for, I think it was 25 or 50,000 gillers, I think it was 25,000 gillers, because they, if they get that, then at least they can pay certain things to keep the office operational until the structural uh, things go into place. So there was no um, bad relationship, if I should say, between the Corporate Governance Council and for sure not my person. Um, whether I gave their letter a wrong interpretation or not, because one of the things that I think that whenever you have a legal angle to things, if you give five lawyers uh, a legal document to read, you end up with five or six different interpretations to it. Um, so that meeting will be held most likely this week. I've discussed the issue briefly with the chairman, uh, Mr. Perry Wilson, and uh, he said, no, Mr. Prime Minister, I think you misread our letter, or we have uh, misread yours, but uh, we are to meet. So I am not, um, I'm not the kind of guy who goes out there contrary to uh, what others sometimes do. Uh, they run to the media and say, you know, this has happened, or we send this letter, we hand in this letter today. I, um, just like with screening of candidates, I have never said which candidate it is that is up for screening because I think that if somebody fails the screening, then you move on with the other one. But um, the public, whether the public wants to know, or it's the media, likes to uh, speculate on who ministers will be or who directors would be or whoever would be, that's for their account. So rather than going into any further discussion on it and create more unnecessary bad blood, I am meeting with the Corporate Governance Council this week, and once we've had our discussions and both parties get the opportunity to clarify um, whatever misunderstanding there would be, we move forward from there. I am Rudolph Samuel, candidate number five on the National Alliance slate. So on September 26, go out and vote for me to represent you in Parliament. Life is a journey full of connections, in safe hands, even when life starts too soon, you don't have to miss a single beat. When a bad hair day makes you sad, just sharing can bring you joy and more to come. They take the plunge, turn fear into faith, while you capture those beautiful moments. In the game of life, it's family that counts. They'll be there even when you lose. We all have our moments of reflection and hope. And when you feel you're losing everything in life, we're there because there's more to come. When life starts too soon, you don't have to miss a single beat. We're here to connect you and share life. Tell so when you want more. 
G-E-B-E, has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Hard work from the, um, from the ministry. We finally have presented a proposal for national health insurance legislation that was sent to the Council of Ministers. Council of Ministers have agreed that that legislation, that draft legislation, could begin its consultative process. So that means that we will be going out to different stakeholders. That's um, all different levels in the community. If someone has an interest in having a discussion about it, contact the ministry because we are open. Because we are open to the discussions, call the ministry. We're happy to discuss it with you because in the end we want this to be win-win for everybody. The idea with national health insurance is that we look at covering all the people on the island, but we need to make sure it's done in a financially reasonable manner. The last topic that I'd like to speak about, something that I'm proud of, something that we haven't really spoken about for um, much during my time in office. Um, the Labor Tripartite Committee yesterday signed a consensus document. So we've been working diligently. The Tripartite Committee com consists of representatives from the business community, from the labor unions, and from government. And we've been in discussions about finding an agreement on how to address the abuse of the six months contracts or short-term um, contracts and attached to that discussions about far-reaching concepts for labor reform. I'm extremely proud of the end result. I think that um, the product is, is a game changer for the country. I think it's something that will, um, again, reignite our economy and also give stability uh, to, to the workers in St. Martin and put upward pressure on salaries. Um, equally significant is the process. It's a process, you know, I've been involved in the tripartite in other incarnations when I was president of SHTA, so from the business representative side. And I've seen how the committees evolved, how the dialogue has been open, how there's a sense of trust, how there's a unified vision in terms of what we want to accomplish. And I'm proud to say we had 100% unanimous consensus on the consensus document.
I am Rudolph Samuel, candidate number five on the National Alliance slate. So on September 26, go out and vote for me to represent you in Parliament. <laughs> Bob, I can understand why you're parking so carefully. Of course, when you can get 80% discount on your Be Sure car insurance. <laughs> but that's overdoing it, Bob. Are you Be Sure? Be Sure. Yeah. Oh my, oh my. What an inventory list and so unnecessary. But wait, your home contents are all insured by Be Sure. That means that you determine the amount you want to insure. No inventory list, no asshole. Are you Be Sure? Be Sure. These are the doors that never close. These are the hands that make a difference. These are the walls that could tell countless stories of helping and healing of storms weathered, of change and growth, of a place where life begins, where hearts are mended, and where hope grows stronger. For more than a quarter of a century, the physicians, medical professionals, and staff of St. Martin Medical Center have combined advanced medical technology and compassionate care to bring a world of medicine to our friends, neighbors, and visitors to the island of St. Martin we all call home. As proud as we are of what we have accomplished, we believe there is still much work to do to continue a proud tradition of providing everyone in our community with the latest technology, the best medicine, and the most exceptional care. St. Martin Medical Center, celebrating 25 years of serving, caring, healing. Go that your aim was not to cut any of the subsidies uh, of the foundations and organizations that are funded by government. Have you achieved that goal? 100% has been achieved. There are no subsidies being cut. Uh, it's being restored to the level it was before. Um, on the on your second topic about uh, no ap appointees um, to government foundations and uh, companies, can you give an idea, uh, give the background of that decision? Why did the Council of Ministers come to that decision? Because we have seen a tendency of people being appointed to uh, government boards uh, of foundations as well as government-owned companies that the Council of Ministers sit back and have no say in. What has happened in the past with previous governments, for some obscure reason, that government-owned companies, of which the government was a shareholder, they managed, with the consent of previous governments, to form <laughs> another company, put it in between the shareholder as a holding company, and then the operating company. And then the holding company becomes the decision maker as to who's going to become uh, or who's going to be appointed or elected to boards of the operating company. And the shareholder sits back and twiddles its thumb and really has no say. That situation, when it comes down to problems that occur, it is the government, the shareholder, who is answerable to the public for those appointments in government-owned companies and foundations. From that point of view, those appointments should not take place since the government is responsible for those appointees without the consent of the Council of Ministers. This needs to stop. And the decision taken by the Council of Ministers is exactly that, that going forward, those structures will be dismantled. That's the instruction to be able to put government in a position that is government has the last, the last say, the Council of Ministers would have the last say of appointees to foundations and government-owned corporations. How does then the Corporate Governance Council fit in this entire structure? 
it has no effect on the Corporate Government Council because whoever government uh, wants to appoint still have to go through, it's the law, the same procedure with the Corporate Government Council. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. Two, three, four. This is how common it is to develop a mental illness. One out of every four. 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 But there is hope. Today, most mental illnesses can be managed and treated. Visit your general doctor if you feel concerned about your thoughts and behaviors or have some difficulty dealing with some of life's issues. If you have been diagnosed and are suffering from a mental illness, keep in mind these four points to help you manage your mental health. One. Get regular checkups with your general doctor. Two, stay on your treatment plan to prevent relapses. Three, find a strong support group in your family and friends. And four, never be afraid to ask for help and look up for the warning signs of your illness. Remember, you are not alone. We are as close as one. Two, three, four. Learn about mental health illness by going to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf-sxm.com. Article 25 of the National Ordinance on AOV was written in the 1960s which states that a decree should be established in which regulations are stipulated in connection with the investment of monies of the AOV. Although this article was not executed by the Antillian government nor the St. Martin government after 101010, in reality investments have always been made using the AOV fund. Not to invest the money would have been irresponsible because it means that the principal would have been um, reduced by inflation and would have eaten the value of the fund. In, two, in June 2013, the SFV board had established investment guidelines concerning their various funds, which at least gives some direction regarding their investment policy. Any final decisions regarding investments in the hospital will be made with the full knowledge and consent of the investment committee. And I want to remind the public as well that there's a strong incentive for SEDV to invest in the hospital. Number one, investing money into our local economy is good for our economy. SEDV would get a proper rate of return. In addition to that, a new hospital will help to bring down the operational expenses for SEDV itself. So, the investment, in our opinion, is a sound and wise investment and, as I mentioned, will be done following all proper procedures. <laughs>